Thank you for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people. You can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresha Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And for this week's episode to finish season five, I am being joined by the amazing Rakaya Valencia da Costa. Welcome to the show, Rakaya. Thank you so much for having me, Tarisha. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm super excited. Oh, I am super excited too. Thank you for being here because we're going to be talking all things boundaries. And this is such a massive topic. We hear that word boundary all over the place. So we're going to delve really deeply into it. But before we do, I am going to share with you a little bit more about Rakaya, who she is and what she does. So Rakaya is an ICF certified coach public speaker and founder of Kaya Network, a platform that provides in-house coaching, social media management, personal branding and copyright services for female business owners that want to scale their business to six figures and beyond. Rakaya has helped over 100 women master their mindsets and achieve exponential growth in their career through mindset and business coaching. She is renowned for her ability to drive impact and empower women to break the rules. Rakaya's unique ability to provide life and business coaching has seen her clients embark on a profound journey of self-discovery, win awards, partner with global brands, and most importantly, find peace within themselves. With her captivating live events, thought-provoking podcast appearances, retreats, and coaching programs, Rakaya has emerged as a rising star in the entrepreneurial scene. Rakaya's entry into the coaching industry was quite uncanny as she pivoted from her 10-year career as a paediatric nurse and moved across the world to Dubai in pursuit of self-mastery. Absolutely amazing, Rakaya. So it's for the been a journey. <laughs> oh, it's been a journey. I can certainly see that. And what a <laughs> wonderful journey it sounds like it's been. So actually, let's delve into your journey a bit more. I would love for you to share a little bit more about some key highlights that led you to doing everything that you do right now. Yeah. So I guess one of the key highlights is always been um, positioning myself where I can operate in my strengths. Mm -hmm. Right. So throughout my career as a nurse, you know, I'd often get a lot of feedback around being able to support patients, being able to support clients. And initially, I just thought that that was inside the nursing, the nursing world. Right. But one of my key highlights has been able to leverage my strengths and use that to impact people on a greater level. Mm -hmm. I like to say that I went from saving lives to changing lives. Mm -hmm. And um, it really has been such an incredible journey of being able to guide people on their journey. And with the clients that I take on board it's normally clients that reflect a younger version of myself right you know people that I can really resonate with who I know the type of support that they need we all need encouragement in life and so my career highlights have been coaching women from all around the world seeing them from the start of their journey and then taking them to the through the process where they go from surviving to thriving oh I absolutely love that I love how you're taking women from where they want to be to where they want to go everything you know surviving to thriving amazing saving to changing what lovely transformational (laughs) words that you use there and I can imagine that as part of that because you're coming from your strength you're using your strength you're seeing people who are the younger version of yourself I would love to know actually what is the younger version of Rakaia what did that look like so the younger version of Rakaia was somebody that was very confident on the outside Mm -hmm. but on the inside lacked confidence and lacked the ability to set the right boundaries Mm -hmm. okay and so the the younger version of me really needed somebody to empower her somebody that could uplift her and let her know 
the true value that she brings into the world. Because many of us, we have gifts and talents, but we park them off on the side. We say, oh, maybe I'll do that another time. Now isn't the right time. There's always the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to go ahead and say, I am going to succeed at this thing called life and I'm going to make it happen and if there aren't people around me that can support me and uplift me I'm going to do it for myself and initially that is how my journey started yeah. from me doing um, the inner work on myself mm -hmm. and providing all the encouragement all the affirmations that I wanted to receive from other people I started telling myself those things because it starts from it starts from us, right? We are the ones that set the boundaries on how people should treat us, how we want to be treated. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I love what you're saying there because you've spoken about confidence, and that is a massive thing that affects many people. You know, I've been there too when it comes to lack of self belief, self confidence, my self concept my identity piece and that there's a lot of work that comes behind doing it the inner work and what you have spoken about there is boundaries which we're going to explore a lot more and that's boundaries with ourselves boundaries with other people as you say you now we show people how to treat us and a lot of that is by the way that we treat ourselves so we hear this word boundary in your opinion what exactly is a boundary and why is it important to know what it is Mm. So a boundary for me is a, a framework that is in place that allows you to um, stay true to yourself and it's something that you can present to others to ensure that they respect and value your needs. Mm. That's really strong. So it helps people to understand your needs. But firstly, you have to understand your needs, isn't it? So it starts, as you, as you said, it starts with yes. yourself. So it starts with you understanding your needs. But sometimes we can have some fears around setting boundaries. So it could be, for example, you know, how is it going to be received by another person? So in your experience and working with your amazing clients, what typical fears, what common fears do you find coming up from people about setting a boundary? Yeah, so I think boundaries is one of those things where many people do struggle with it. And they struggle with setting boundaries because they have a fear on how that boundary is going to be perceived by that other person. How yeah. is that person going to receive the word no? Is it going to cause conflict? Is it going to cause them to judge me in a certain mm. type of way? And I would say that fear of judgment fear of not being liked and people pleasing also comes into play with that as well you know for many of us from from childhood we're raised in households where people pleasing is a thing you want to make your parents happy you want to make them feel proud and then transitioning out of being a child to then being an adult where you have to focus more so on making yourself happy and making yourself proud that transition isn't always a smooth process yeah. and it's a transition that happens through work and a lot of people assume that boundaries is something that just comes about but actually it's something that you have to put in place which is why I like to refer to it as a framework because mm -hmm. it is an intentional thing yeah yeah I love that word framework because as you said it is an intentional thing and a lot of our experiences as you alluded to as well in the family household people pleasing our work environments can make us fearful of setting that boundary and one thing that you did say there, which is also very key, is that fear of judgment as well. Because when we have that fear of judgment, you know, from like my experience of working with people too, is that we can say, so am I going to be rejected because of the boundary? You know, am I going to be abandoned because mm. of the boundary? Or am I going to experience a sense of injustice? I put up a boundary and suddenly there's mistreatment. That comes yes. from actually doing that. And sometimes we can find that, you know, particularly because I've got a HR management background, there was a fear of victimization. Um, for mm. example, if you 
went to you made a complaint or a grievance against somebody it's like you know would i be victimized even though it's you know against the law to be there's that fear like would i be victimized for doing that so you've got the injustice piece that comes out of it also mm. for my experience as well and you know, i've seen people who they have said they have asserted a boundary and there's betrayal that come from mm. it as well there's, there's so much that can happen. humiliation no I set a boundary and suddenly I was embarrassed by doing it there's right. so much that can come there's so many fears and you have spoken about some of the things that helped you for example to assert it you said about affirmations so if we are encountering some of those fears what can we do what is the inner work what does that look like in order to be able to stand in your strength stand in your power to have that confidence what are some of the key steps we can take in order to feel comfortable with that? Yeah. So I think it goes back to the point of, you know, why is setting a boundary important to us? Yes. If we feel as though we need to set a boundary, we have to explore what is the reason behind that. Is it because we want to ensure that the person respects our time? Is it that we want to ensure that the person isn't going to take our kindness for granted mm -hmm. or isn't going to mistrust our, our vulnerability? And when you can understand your own needs behind why that boundary needs to be met, then it allows you to prioritize the boundary right because then you you almost weigh it up and say okay I may be uncomfortable mm. setting this boundary but what happens if I don't yes and when you think about what happens if I don't you then think okay the fear which one is greater is the fear greater or is it more important for that boundary to be set because you don't want to face the repercussions of not having that boundary in place. Yeah. And I think it also comes down to having a real open and honest conversation with yourself on. If you are feeling restrictions on setting boundaries, where is that coming from? And what do you need to tell yourself or give yourself to let yourself know that it's okay to set that boundary? Wow. The word self-compassion is just coming up when yeah. you said that. It's having self-compassion to when that comes up for you, because it is work. And there will be things possibly that come up for each person when they're doing this exploration. It's having compassion for where mm. you are in that process right now. Because once you know, you know. And the exactly. great thing is, what Wakaira is saying here is that you can work on understanding why it's important to you. And rather than what you're trying to avoid, the fear is then moving towards what is in it for you. You know, what is in it for me? And also, what's in it for the other person? Yeah. Because I remember when we were having a one to one discussion and you spoke about how in a relationship, because a lot of the time, some of the boundaries that we are set is going to be with our partners, for right. example, there, um, because romantic relationships evolve, they change, we grow as people too. And you said about having curiosity to create space for your partner to change their boundaries and creating mm -hmm. that space. And I would love for you to explore a little bit more about that, because sometimes we don't think about creating that space for boundaries to change because we're evolving people. What our boundary was last week might be completely different today. Right. So. I would love to, for you to share a bit more about creating that safe space to be able to pivot. Absolutely. And I think that point there not only um, resonates in romantic relationships, but also in friendships. When you often look at the breakdown of friendships, mm. often it's because those boundaries have changed and the other person cannot or is not willing to accept the new boundaries in place. Mm. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to recognize that as humans, we are constantly evolving. We are constantly learning more about ourselves and the things that we we like and the things that we don't like. So when you do have a partner, I think it's really important to communicate openly with each other and always provide that safe space mm -hmm. and provide that reassurance on even if your boundaries do change, it's still a topic of conversation. It doesn't have to be conflict because what often happens is in, in relationships, when a partner sets a boundary, it then becomes a source of conflict. Yes. But that's 
can be met with open communication in respecting that that person or your partner wants to create a new boundary. Talk about the reason why that new boundary is is um or needs to be initiated. You know, where is that coming from? How can I better love on you? How can I better support you? And if your partner does the same thing for you, then you're going to have a very healthy, thriving mm. relationship where you can constantly meet each other where you're at, regardless on how you evolve through that process. Mm. That's so powerful because it is about communication. 100% is about communication and being able to take that time a lot of it is about actually just taking time to sit mm. down and have conversations because everyone can say we're busy. We've got lots of stuff going on. We're very proactive people in the world. But to actually dedicate time. And now I'm a firm advocate of having a, a relationship audit, you know, even like once a yeah. week, a state of the union conversation. You can sit down to say, you know, how's things going? What's working? What's not quite working? Those kind of conversations. And within that conversation, then of course, you're probably likely to talk about boundaries, things that have changed. And it's the way in which we say it. It's the way in which we communicate it. Because when we can say the why, like you said, why the boundaries change, what's in it for you? And then also, you know, how it makes you feel. Now, and it would really help make me feel whatever it makes you feel about that boundary changing. And then, of course, then the other person can share and you can talk mm. about, so how do we find a way forward? You know, what do we need to stop, start, continue doing? What can we do more? What can we do less of in order to meet each other, as you said, where you are right now? And that's such an important thing, especially when you said about friendships too, because, mm. yes, again, people do change, lives changing as, as well. And it's about getting comfortable to talk about boundaries. If something is showing up and it really is affecting you in a way, talk about it. No, create that space to talk about it. I think it's really important that we create those safe spaces, Rakaia, as you mentioned, to be able to have that kind of quality conversation there. Yeah. Okay. And if someone okay. isn't, sorry, if someone isn't respecting the boundary, mm. then having that honest conversation with yourself on where do you now want to go with that? How yeah. do you now want to navigate that, yeah. right? Because sometimes people fall into the realm of then trying to change the other person. But you mm. can't change the other person. All you can do is change how you respond and change your accessibility. So if you find yourself in a circumstance where you constantly feel as though your boundaries are not being respected, then it's a case of looking at, are you making yourself too accessible? And how can you pull back in order to identify where you now want to move forward with that? Because we can't, sometimes we can, you know, uh, complain and say, that person isn't respecting the boundary, but are you respecting your own boundary? Mm. Yeah. Because your own boundary would be to not allow somebody to continually disrespect you or try to, um, dismiss what that is right so if you want someone to respect a boundary that's in place you also have to respect your own thoughts you have to respect your emotions that are coming up and the times in which you're being triggered yeah and that person will probably respect you more and say you know what granted I actually appreciate the fact that you know you're you're standing up for yourself in in that particular circumstance mm, yeah I love that absolutely love that because it's that self-reflection self-exploration which is key and I often say and sometimes this is a very hard pill to swallow for some people if we are feeling disrespected for example in a situation it often is a mirror of yeah. us not respecting ourselves in some way it's a value respect is a value so for example how are you respecting yourself? Just generally, it doesn't even have to be in that relationship, but in life, in your health, in all of those kind of things, because disrespect can show up in many different forms. So, for wow. example, so if something is triggering us or activating us, let's say somebody is being disrespectful or we feel that they're being disrespectful, we're perceiving it as that way, or we feel that somebody is being disloyal or being uncommitted, 
we really have to do that inner work on ourselves to say, so how am I being committed to myself? Have I committed right. to my goals? Have I committed to my values? So it does, energy is energy. So again, it's about yeah. looking into it, just to ask yourself, and it's a bit more about that value that's being pushed and to say, am I actually living that value myself? Yes. So what's your You're thoughts on that? Who you are, often, yeah. right? So a lot of, and both men and women will say, oh, I'm so sick of meeting these rubbish men or meeting these rubbish women. I'm mm. sorry to tell you, you attract who you are. So if you want to attract better, you need to be better and you need to do better. When you start focusing on leveling yourself up and doing the inner work that you need to do to be a better person, you will naturally attract better. And yeah. some people don't like to hear that. No, they don't. But, uh, <laughs> like you said, it's a hard pill to swallow, but I think it's necessary to hear yeah absolutely it's a it's a hard truth mm. i know from the work that i do my personal work that it is work to do and it's a really great piece of work and exploration to do because we do attract who we are and we mm. also attract to know what we believe to mm. be ourselves so that work that inner work that self-concept that identity piece is really important the mindset piece behind it is so important and I would love to explore that a bit more with you Rakaya actually because you now you've spoken about confidence and could you share more about the link between boundaries and how it can bring about confidence in your opinion? Absolutely so when you when you're able to set a boundary, it then um, not only helps the person that you're setting the boundary with to perceive you in another way, but you are validating your own feelings. You are validating your own needs, which in essence increases your self-esteem. The mm -hmm. more you do something and you're able to recognize the positive impact that setting a boundary can have, that's going to build your confidence because you'll start to see that there are people out there that are willing to accept your boundaries and that will actually celebrate you for setting those boundaries. And that is what allows you to build on your confidence and start to lean into your authenticity more because then it no longer becomes it, it no longer becomes something where you're thinking about your your fears or, or the other person yeah. but actually you start to think I can be a better person from setting this thing I can have the confidence to do something that I wouldn't have done by setting this particular boundary and so I think it it makes a significant difference to our self-confidence when we're able to set the right boundaries at the right time with the right thing and the right people. Yeah, that's really great because when you were talking there, especially when you said about celebrating mm. boundaries, that self-acknowledgement is positive reinforcement. And we love that. We, you know, we've grown up with praise as kids. To get praise is great. As adults, we want praise. Yeah. At work, it's great to get praise. That acknowledgement, that self-acknowledgement is key. And something quite visual, for people who are visuals would be, it might sound a little bit old school, but get yourself a jar or something like that. So every time that you set a boundary, yes. celebrate it because then you've got a visualization or something really tangible to say, I've done it. Because often we can just go, oh yeah, I set a boundary. But actually when you've got something quite visual and you can put in a pebble or marble or, or coins, yeah. you know, whatever it is just like you can start building up because that's the confirmation and celebration to you that you set a boundary mm. and then leaning into how does it feel to set that boundary you know I have clients where we celebrate and they say I set a boundary we're kind of like that's amazing how yeah. does it feel and really leaning into that and they'll say you know what it felt amazing it felt much better than I thought it it would and I say remember that thought put it into a jar, you know, collect it so that when another circumstance comes up, rather than that fear taking over and trying to control you, you can think back to that memory and say, oh, but the last time I set a boundary, this is how I felt. So I know that I can, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Is that reflection going back? It's yeah. so important to celebrate. And then also, you know, if you are in a relationship, 
is to celebrate your partner for setting their boundaries too because yeah. we need to have self-celebration but when also your partner has set a boundary and you're like even if they told you they set a boundary with somebody else or in a relationship witness that celebrate that too because we should feel safe to be able to set boundaries and be able to celebrate that too and acknowledge ourselves for it absolutely and positive uh, use positive reinforcement with the other person as well particularly partners you know when you see that they are respecting and celebrating a, a boundary of yours let them know mm. say I really appreciate you doing that I really appreciate you listening to how I feel about this particular thing because that's how our uh, romantic relationships improve as well as our friendships mm -hmm. because people then recognize oh that was something that made made you happy I want to continue doing that oh yeah absolutely so we've got celebration there and we've got gratitude you know yeah. two really high vibe energies to be in when it comes to boundary setting and celebration and being appreciative for that person and witnessing it too so I absolutely love that you know, when you were talking about needs as well, some people, because, you know, way back in the day, I had no idea what I needed. I had no idea. I, needs? Oh, I need food. That's probably one of the most, like, <laughs> one, of, one of Maslow's basic needs. I need, yeah. shelter, I need food, I need water, you know, I need to sleep, you know, all of those kind of like basic physiological needs and obviously safety kind of needs, but even though I wasn't too aware of that, how can somebody start to identify their needs and not feel that they are being needy? Because some people are like, what's the difference between neediness and needs? Yes, great question. So essentially, it doesn't have to be complicated, right? When you think about your needs, the easiest way that I would suggest is think about it from a mental perspective so what's your mental needs what's your emotional needs what's your physical needs and for some people what's your spiritual needs mm. and when you separate that let's say physical you know you have a need to move your body you have a need to fuel yourself with good nutritious food emotions you have a need to be able to um share your thoughts to be able to have a safe space created for you, whether that's a space that you create for yourself or that's a space where somebody else creates that for you. And the more you focus on your needs, the more you understand who you are. And initially, when you start out on your growth journey, you may not understand what it is that you need. And so a really great way to recognize what your needs are is look at the things that you are triggered by. Look at the things that upset you. Yes. And that will tell you a lot about what your needs are. If you get triggered when somebody lies, you have a need for someone to be honest with you. You have a need for someone to be transparent with you. Yeah. Yeah. You may have a need. We all have a, a need for human connection, every single one of us. Yeah. So there's certain needs where all of us have the same needs. And then there's other needs that will be directly related to you and your experiences. Yeah. Much of our childhood would determine the types of needs that we have as a adult. Yes. And how we show up in our in our relationships. Often when, when it comes to, for example, attachment styles, you know, what how do you perceive love and how do you give love? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Attachment styles is a massive piece, of course. Mm. Again, our experiences as a child by our caregivers and our parents can influence our adult relationships and determine whether we have insecurities, insecure, right. and also, you know, the, the secure aspects of it. So definitely explore attachment styles and you know how that could be affecting your needs there. And mm -hmm. what you said there and the way in which you said it, I think it's so important because people might have missed this. So when Rakaya was talking about if you need somebody who is he doesn't lie to you for example what do you need you need somebody who is honest somebody who is transparent so Akaya used language which was towards I want honesty because sometimes people say what I don't want is somebody who yeah. is dishonest 
So again, you're focusing on what you're trying to avoid. I don't want, so I need somebody who isn't going to be um, dishonest. Right. But the mindset piece is what is it? So what's just the opposite then? Well, I want somebody who is honest. Mm. So it's really important to act on what it is towards you want. I want transparency. So the language that we use and how we actually use our mindset is so important for attracting exactly what it is. So that's really, yeah, that's absolutely key what you're saying there. And Again, it is different to neediness because neediness comes from a sense of, I would say, like a disempowered state. It's that clinginess. It's that insecurities, for example, that you've spoken about, the attachment styles. So that's the difference with the neediness, I would say, in comparison to what a need is. Like you said, we have needs and we are wired to connect as human beings. So it's okay to be able to express those needs. Absolutely. And if you find that you are quite needy, then explore that a bit further. Mm. That may mean that you are not getting a particular need met, which is causing you to be needy. You're not getting the time, the undivided time that you may need, which is causing you to be triggered by something. Mm. And I think when we think about relationships, you know, understanding what is your love language. Yeah, yeah. That is key because, as you said before, you know how we want to receive love because it can be so it can be different for each person. We often think about how we can give love to other person and think, oh yeah, I bought that person a beautiful piece of necklace or jewelry, but they didn't receive it well. Well, that person's love language might not be gifts. That mm. person's love language might be quality time or acts of service. So there's an opportunity for people to go out there and do the five love languages quiz, which you can find online by a gentleman called Dr. Gary Chapman, and to explore that. And also if you are in a relationship, because you can do your love language if you're a single person on there, even if you are coupled up, there's actually loads of love languages quizzes out there to be able to explore on this website. But get curious. Now get Mm. curious about you know how you want to receive love and how you appreciate being treated in that relationship or in that dynamic whatever that might be yeah so and also in terms of communication you spoke about communication do you have any specific communication techniques that you would say can help a conversation when it comes to expressing boundaries and needs I think the main thing is active listening in a conversation right so active listening not only for the other person, as in you're listening to what it is that you're saying, but actively listening for yourself. So what are the things that have been coming up on your mind that you have been pushing to the side and forgetting about those things, right? Mm -hmm. And if you find that you forget things during conversation, write little pointers or make a mental note of something to say that actually this is something that I want to bring up in conversation and keep it as simple as possible Mm -hmm. and think about how it's going to be received is there a way that you can um, deliver it with kindness right one of my things this year is to not be nice but to be kind because when we're nice we can often um, blur our own boundaries and allow other people to overstep our boundaries. But when we are kind, we come from a place of compassion. We come from a place of understanding. We come from a place of actively listening and not listening to respond, actually listening to what the other person is saying. And before you react, process what could be behind what the person is saying? Mm. We may get triggered by something that someone says, but if we just take a few seconds to think, what could that person mean by that? What is one of their needs that maybe isn't being met, which is causing them to feel that way? Because it's not always about us. Yeah, And it's very easy to make it make a conversation a me thing and there will be conversations where it is about you but if you're having a conversation it's a two-way thing so how does the other person feel Mm. are you acknowledging their feelings Mm. that level of empathy isn't it put yourself in their position which is 
a huge part of active listening is that empathy and actually test taking time. There's one thing to listen and there's another thing to hear, right? There's yeah. <laughs> really have to say, yeah, actually, yeah, are you, did you hear me? <laughs> so there can be a difference between the two. Rakaya, I absolutely you know, love everything that you have shared there in terms of boundaries and communication and really tapping into your needs. So powerful and it's going to give so many people room for exploration and thought because as you said, it starts with us Absolutely. and the inner work is so important and I wondered if we could pivot some of this what you shared actually might be able to transition into the the next part of the conversation what about some of your your key personal experiences particularly when it comes to romantic experiences too I'm really keen to know a little bit more about some of the key experiences and learnings that you've had from that in terms of romantic experiences yeah, absolutely. So for me, uh, when it comes to romantic relationships, setting boundaries was always a challenge because I attended a girls' secondary school. I wasn't really around a lot of men um, at that age. And so when it got to um, college and I had to set those boundaries, I didn't know what that looked like. So I allowed other people to tell me what my boundaries were. I allowed my own thoughts and things to be on the back burner. Mm. And that people pleasing complex was what I thought was gonna be the gateway to me having a, a relationship. Yeah. I didn't consider whether it would be a healthy relationship, but I just said, I wanna, I want to be in a relationship. And so during my my years of growth, I've really had to be super intentional about setting that boundary. Because for me, there were times as a child where some of my boundaries were not respected. And so I had created a negative association to setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. I had created an association where if I set certain boundaries, I'm going to be disliked or I'm going to be labeled as something that I don't want to be labeled as. And so the process of rewiring my thoughts was something that took some time. And I still, till this day, have to be super intentional mm -hmm. because I, I will, if I'm not careful, fall into that category of trying to be nice again rather than trying to trying to be kind and what has helped me setting boundaries is focusing on how will that serve me and how will it serve the other person but primarily how how is setting that boundary going to serve me and initially during the dating stages I've realized that that is the time to set the most boundaries Absolutely. on how you want somebody to communicate with you, mm -hmm. how you want to be spoken to, how do you want to, you know, be addressed? What does, what does that look like? And it has been a journey. It's been up and it's been yeah. down and I've made so many mistakes. <laughs> I've not set boundaries when I should have set boundaries. And actually I've had circumstances where I have faced the consequences of not setting the right boundaries. Mm -hmm. And some of those circumstances have actually put my safety at risk. And so I had to have a very honest conversation with myself and say, Rakaya, if you do not figure out a way to set these boundaries, what next? What is the next thing going to be? Are you going to end up, you know, chopped up in a bush? Are you going to, what is it that, that could happen to you if, if I don't set those, set those boundaries? And for me, setting boundaries with, with the same sex or the same gender wasn't an issue. It was always the opposite because there was a need to please. Yeah. And by recognizing how, how dangerous it could be not setting those boundaries, I had no choice but to figure it out and say, you know what? I'm going to empower myself by setting these boundaries. 
And I'm not going to allow my fear or any other things to get in the way of, of doing that because I know that my boundaries are there to protect me, whether mm. that's to protect me physically, whether it's there to protect me emotionally, but it's there to protect me. So I have to honour that. Yeah. That's the least that I owe to myself. Mm. That's a really powerful share. And I do want to emphasise as well, just what Rakaya has said there, if you feel that your physical safety, your mental safety is going to be severely compromised when it comes to being in any relationship, any dynamic, do find ways, do seek ways in order to get yourself mm. out of that situation, get help whatever that help might look like. There's lots of organisations out there that you can turn to. Obviously, there's the authorities, police service, whatever that might be. But I do strongly encourage you to do what you have to do to protect yourself and any other person who might be involved in that situation because boundaries and when they're not there, they can get extreme. They can get mm-hmm. extreme. From Makaya's story, what you can see is that there was a huge transformation in mindset in terms of empowering herself and moving herself to safety and then working on herself to say, I now know what I don't want. So this is what I do want. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be super inspiring for people because not only that, I've read your bio and look at the amazing achievements that you've had by being able to assert boundaries with Mm -hmm. yourself and also with other people. So life can change really radically. And when you was talking there, would you say that, you know, you, you've spoken about the, the dating experience as well. And I would say absolutely. There is a fear for a lot of people about asserting boundaries in the dating phase. But this is the time for you at the very start to be able to assert boundaries, get clarifications on what it is that you're looking for when it comes to relationship. Because the more you show up as a representative, when you are in a relationship and your authentic self comes out, that's when it can get really tricky and can get really messy there too so that's a huge key share there so thank you for that because I know that's going to inspire a lot of people also I wanted to acknowledge for my guests I am so always curious and I know the listeners are too about what somebody's personal definition of love is so for you what does love mean to you in a romantic context so love means to me a a choice to show up unconditionally and accept what is presented in front of you. And I think whether that be emotions, whether that be a particular circumstance, I firmly believe that loving someone is a conscious choice. It's a daily choice, right? Where you you show up regardless of what that circumstance is. And what I mean by that is you, you are there with a person on their good days and on their bad days. Mm. And that's what it essentially means, means to me. Um, and I will say that as as a child, I often questioned, you know, whether my love was or the love that I received was conditional. And there were times in which I felt as though it was. And so I now define love as only being something that is unconditional. Mm. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah, and that's a key learning for you. And this mm. is why I ask, because love means so much to different people. It's not the, the dictionary explanation of what love is, is what it means to you. And a lot of that will be through our experiences and through our lessons and our learnings and the knowledge we acquire. So thank you so much for that share. You are so welcome. Require. This has been such an amazing conversation and I just know it's going to bring so much value to every single person who has listened to it. I have a parting tradition on this show, Rakaya, where I ask my guests to share with the audience one key takeaway to help them along their journey of love, life and relationships. And it would be incredible if you could share that. I would say leave your ego at the door. If you feel as though your boundaries aren't being respected, Honour yourself enough to rise above it. Don't match the other person's energy. 
Yes. Stay true to yourself, be authentic, and do what you know is the right thing to do. And you know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for that share. Rakaya, once again, I've so enjoyed this conversation. It's just a what wonderful a way. It's been a pleasure. What a way to end season five. Now, I know the audience are going to want to reach out to you or what are you? <laughs> Where are you hanging out? Where can they find you if they need to? So I am on LinkedIn. Um, my URL is RB Da Costa. That's where I hang out the most. I am also on Instagram as well at the Kaya Network. And um, my website is under construction at the moment, but I will be um, on my website at www.kayanetwork.com. Brilliant. I love that. Follow her work. I am in contact with Kaya. I follow her work. Oh my goodness, the value and content she drops daily on LinkedIn. Boom. <laughs> it is so transformational. Do, do follow her. Rakaya, once again, thank you so much. Can't thank you enough for this great conversation. And thank you. It's been such a pleasure. I love how I love this podcast. I love how free flowing your conversations are, just your energy. Um, it's just a pleasure to be here. And I really hope that our conversation today resonates with many people. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback, you know, make sure that you guys continue to tune in to Tarisha's podcast, drop your comments, send your feedback, let <laughs> us know what you enjoyed the most what part of this podcast resonated with you. If you'd like to see us together again, do let us Ooh. know and we'll make it happen. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your kind words, Rakaya. Yes, if you'd like to see us together again, let us know what topics you'd like us to talk about because there's so much we could talk. Yeah, and, we, and we can talk. We, we can, can talk. talk, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a series, that'd be it. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, thank you. And for everybody who has listened to this really oh, bomb dropping episode, I want to thank you for your time, for your attention and for your energy. And until the next episode, take great care of yourself and others too.